Greg Pickle, I'm Bob. It's time for the draft. Last year, Dallas. It's my Nashville. Cowboys. Saquon Barkley goes number two. We're not going to have anyone go number two overall from Penn State. This year, it's in Nashville, Thursday through Sunday. Whoever's fortunate enough to go to that city for that draft is probably going to just have a, a hell of a time. <laughs> I think so. I'm not mentioning any names. Anyway, uh, we got to talk about some Penn State players who should go, I think, maybe in the top 100 for sure. Yep. And there's some mid-round picks as well. The, the, the mystery surrounding maybe what will happen with Trace McSorley, where he goes, what round he goes, how he fits into that team's offense, I think is also very interesting. But who do you think is the guy, as we talk about this right now, that's going to have the most productive NFL career? And will he be the guy that goes first in the draft? Yeah, so I think there's two guys that jump immediately out to me. It's Connor McGovern. Mm -hmm. And it's Miles Sanders. And I know that Amani is the third guy that could be in that conversation. Sharif Miller yep. certainly could. All these Penn State guys could have a long career. But at the end of the day, Connor McGovern's just durable. I mean, he, he's a guy that did not miss a lot of time at Penn State yeah. due to injury. He can play all three positions. I mean, he's a guy that even if he's not maybe a starter for his entire career, it just feels like he's a guy that plays 13, 15 years, and maybe not that long, but <laughs> 8 to 10 seems at least the, the floor. I mean, he just doesn't miss a lot of games. He will be 38 still holding it down in the NFL. <laughs> I mean, Great call. I'm holding you to it. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't missed a lot of games. He leaves a year early, so he yeah. doesn't have that uh, an extra year of college. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think he could be the first guy off the board. I think he could also be the most impactful guy when it comes to Sanders. Yeah. You know, less wear and tear than most. The only concern I have with him is, in terms of draft position, right. is will somebody move up and take, you know, will somebody that's going to take him trade back for some reason, who knows why, Yeah. and then that, you know, the the run that maybe we think is going to happen right back is there. So I'm going to go with McGovern for both. Mm -hmm. You could make a case for a couple guys, though. Yeah, I think Connor's probably the safest pick in the draft, and I, I do think that um, what I always, what I really liked about Connor is not, he he was always comfortable right. from a very young age. I mean, whatever Penn State threw at him, they played him at tackle. He tried his best; it didn't work out. But he was he was playing significant uh, snaps as a true freshman right. after enrolling in January. He played hurt a lot too. He he, he I think he played through through some things, which yeah. is what you want to see. He is versatile. He can play center in a pinch. He can play probably both guard spots. Um, he, yeah, to me, I think he is a guy that I think he goes somewhere in the second round. Uh, I just wonder if somebody. You, I just think that you could see it. You could see a scenario, Greg, where three Penn State guys go within 15 picks of each other. So I think we'll that, be pretty busy if that yeah, happens. Yeah. So uh, I think you could see that. I don't know that you will. I'm sure there's going to be a Penn State guy that slides a little bit, and that might be Imani a little bit. Uh, the more that the draft process has played out, a lot of people are saying it's not a strong cornerback right. class, but he's a long corner who can run. So I think he has that going for him. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's going to be Miles that goes first, but I do think Connor will have the longest career, and he's the safest pick. Um, but where? what about some, real quick, just your thoughts about Trace McSorley, number one, and also I think maybe the, the wild card of the Penn State class might be uh, Sharif Miller. I just think that he's a guy that can still get better. He can rush the passer. He's got some things to work on. I think he's a guy that can help the right team. Yeah, so just in terms of some draft comparables, I have Tarif Miller as this year's Troy Apke, a guy that goes earlier than we expect him to. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see him fourth, fifth round at this point. I have Ryan Bates as a guy that surprises too. I think we see him go on day three. Some people have an undrafted grade on him. I think someone's going to take a chance mm -hmm. on him. And then when it comes to Trace McSorley, you know, you can look at 100 mock drafts, and you might only find 10 of them that have him drafted, but the cliche this time of year is it only takes one team at yeah. one moment to fall in love with you and be willing to take a chance on you. If you're ever going to take a chance on somebody, he seems to be about as good of a <laughs> good as a candidate as you could find, especially in the 6th and 7th round, which obviously there's been some tremendously impressive yeah. players that come out of the 6th and 7th round. However, a lot of those guys end up not even making it to the 53-man roster. Yeah. So, you know, you're obviously looking for someone who can contribute, maybe can, maybe can't. So, to me, I, I think, and maybe it's because we follow this team so closely and we know what he's capable of, I'm hard-pressed to believe that he does not get drafted on Saturday. Yeah. One final guy maybe to mention, Kevin Givens, a guy that, right. uh, you know, he, he, had, he had his moments at Penn State. He didn't have enough of them. Uh, he was suspended for a game mm -hmm. uh, this past season. You just wonder... You know, he's a he's 
a strong kid. He's not the biggest guy, maybe an under tackle. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're an NFL team, do you, do you roll the dice on him late in the draft, or you say, hey, he's a priority free, free agent who's going to have to earn it? I think he's probably on the back end of that. He, I mean, if his initial 40 time would have stuck <laughs> at the NFL Combine, and maybe. It's like 4-2. Yeah, like it was, that whole thing was just bizarre. But he didn't do any – he didn't – I had yet to see anyone say that he wowed them at Pro Day. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, at the Combine. Yeah. And he didn't redo anything at Pro Day. So it's hard for me to think that a guy that had, at least early in the process, undrafted free agent uh, potential in all likelihood uh, has worked his way into the late rounds. But, yeah, it takes one team, so we'll see. But I would expect Penn State to be busy on Friday night and busier on Saturday. I can't wait. It should be a lot of fun watching this thing unfold. Uh, Nashville is a, is a fun town. I just hope that, you know, some people get a chance to go there and really, really just enjoy what that city has to offer. Um, but, yeah, I think Penn State will be w very well represented, but I do think it'll be, it'll be more uh, at, once the, at once, I think the, the draft for Penn State begins after the top 50 or 60 picks, yeah. and then I think they're going to be very busy, I think, uh, you know, Friday and Saturday. We'll see how it plays out, but uh, that's it for this edition of This Week in Penn State Football. Yeah, last one with Tommy Stevens over there. And the last one with Tommy Stevens. See you, Tommy.